Hey guys and welcome back for another video. Today I'm going to be showing you my newest sewing machine. So if you're not already following me over on Instagram and Facebook then you probably don't know that I did go out and buy an industrial sewing machine. That is my third out of four machines that I um, really really want to have. <laughs> don't tell my husband. Um, so I'm gonna flip the camera around and show you guys this machine. It is an older model But these are made like tanks and they should last uh, Like a hundred years. I Think I mean, I know that the motors go on these guys and then you just can swap out the motor But the actual machine itself they are workhorses. I mean this one is was meant to be on a you know um, industrial floor so you can imagine how many things you could sew with this machine. And then I have a little sneak peek for you guys. So if you wait till the end, I will show you um, a tutorial that I have in the works right now. I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna film it or how I'm going to, it's, it's a little bit of a long-winded tutorial um, with many steps. So I'm trying to think of the best way to show you guys um, how to make this. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip it around and then show you my new baby. <laughs> okay, so here she is. She is a Mitsubishi DY340. Um, I have not much information on this machine, so that's pretty much as far as um, any backstory I have with it. Um, it has a clutch motor which is a pretty big motor. This machine with the table probably weighs like 150 pounds. It is so heavy, I cannot lift it. So now that it's in place, if I want to lift it again, I'm gonna need two strong men to help me because um, it, is, it is a tank. Um, so this is the machine. It comes with this spool stand here. So you can put two, and I'm assuming that that's for just like a quick change. So you use, you know, you can put two of your most popular spools. It came with a lamp um, installed in the table. And I put an LED bulb in there because they had a regular bulb in there and it was getting so hot. But now we are modernized and we have an LED bulb in there. But I'm really impressed that the light still works. The table itself is in really good condition. There's just some splitting with that side panel thingy here. So with industrial machines, you're probably gonna get a drawer. This one is made out of metal. This is a metal drawer. And I've seen them in newer machines and that's usually plastic and I, and I assume it probably breaks, but this is heavy duty. And it's not going anywhere. Um, so because these machines come with a table, um, the pedal is built into the table. So here is a very large pedal and it has this little guy here and he actually lifts the presser foot. So I haven't really adjusted that yet for my um, knee height but this there's the uh, huge motor under there like it is so big and just, just just metal like heavy heavy metal so I'm gonna go ahead and do a close-up so you guys can appreciate the machine a little more and I can show you a little bit more um, underneath the machine I bet you're probably interested okay so here's the machine close up um, as you can see, it sort of threads like an older style machine. Um, I have a really thick nylon thread and they're great for upholstery or, you know, like bag making and things. Um, I'm still trying to figure out where I can get this type of thread, especially in Canada. It's a Coates brand. Um, so I'm on the hunt for that. So if you guys have any recommendations for either a place that ships to Canada or a place in Canada. This is um, a six by six. This is the one that's in the machine now. I really like it. 
Okay, so with this machine, this one has a walking foot. So it has two different pieces that move and just kind of walk along. So it's great for really, really thick materials. So I can put many layers of vinyl and leather through this machine and it is so easy to go through. And I just, this was the main reason why it's because I didn't want to somehow, you know, injure my domestic machines. So this is why I wanted to get an industrial so I can leave all the, you know, lighter weight things for the other sewing machine. And then when I want to do something really thick, I can use this guy. Um, so this is the back stitch. So when you want to lock your stitches, there's a presser or there is a, a, um, presser foot lifter here but it is oh, it's really hard to do so I'm not sure what I need to oil with this machine um, you know because some things are tougher to do than others so I'm not sure if that's normal or if you know I need to get in there with the oil but I did get this right here this is a clear stainless sewing machine oil and there's like circles around and I am I've been told that that's where you can inject the oil, but I mean, there's so many, so many of them that I'm not sure if you have to put them in every single one, because some are like right here, there is some threaded area. So it's clearly that's for, you know, an accessory to attach, but I'm not sure. So like I said, if you guys have any information about um, DY340, please let me know if you know anyone with this machine and you can somehow get your hands on an, a user manual. I did send an email to Mitsubishi, so they'll, we'll see if they, um, they help me out, but I'm not counting on it. So here is the wheel that, you know, it's really stiff though, but if you press down on the presser foot or on the pedal a little bit, it kind of makes it go faster. So this is the bobbin winder. You put your bobbin here and then you click this forward and then it kind of engages in the belt. So when you go to press your pedal, then it will then spin this. And then once the bobbin's filled, it snaps back like really hard actually. So I'm not sure what this is for or this is for. Um, of course, this is where the bobbin casing goes. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and lift the machine. You guys can see what it looks like underneath. I don't even know if this is what it's supposed to look like underneath, but hopefully it's not missing anything. That's so heavy. Okay. So. Here is the bottom. So we have this reservoir here, which, which has a line. So I just put the oil in there. Um, I have never seen an industrial like this, so I'm not exactly sure if this is like an add-on, but usually there is a, a pan at the bottom of this where and it has wicking threads that wick up the um, oil. So I don't know, this is the first time I've ever seen this before. That's why I'm trying to find out information about it. Um, there is the bobbin and this one actually has a larger bobbin than a normal machine. And I guess that was something that was important to a lot of people because, of course, then you don't have to wind your bobbin as often. Um, especially if you're using a thicker thread, then you definitely would go through that a lot faster. So I'm just going to pull it out of the machine and show you guys. But um, I'll just show you. It's, it's kind of dirty but yeah this is what the inside looks like so I'm like was there a pan here I don't even know so to access this bobbin you have to reach under the table and then you're just gonna pull out the bobbin and hopefully the thread will come with it <laughs> oh okay it was stuck this foot is really strong um, and then it's just like a regular older machine bobbin. So if you are familiar with older machines, then you will definitely recognize this piece. It's exactly the same as, um, 
an older machine, but the bobbin is actually quite large. I can compare it to a regular bobbin there. So it definitely has a lot more space on it, which is awesome. So with, with the industrial machines though, um, they only do one thing. And the reason they do one thing is because they are really good at that one thing. So for this one, you're only going to do a straight stitch. You're not going to do anything else. Um, you are going to have bigger and smaller stitch lengths. But other than that, you are going straight and that is it. So I'll just show you like a little bit of a test of exactly what it looks like when it's on. Um, I'm going to turn it on now. So you can hear it. Um, it does make a noise when it's on, unlike you know a regular machine. It doesn't usually buzz, but this one because it has a huge motor. Um, but it's not that loud. It's it's surprisingly not as loud as I thought it would be. So there's a light switch, literally a light switch under the table. So you can hear it buzzing. Now you're ready to work. Okay, so I have a scrap piece of waterproof canvas and I'm just going to show you guys. So initially I'm going to put the presser foot down and then when I want to lift I can just use my, my knee which is nice because then you have both your hands to be able to work with your project, especially with the um, thicker ones. So I'm just going to start going. I'm scared. <laughs> like I said, I don't know much about this machine, so I had to figure out, you know, all the things that it wants me to do. If I had a user manual, that would be very easy but um, it also because it has a variable foot so which means that you know you press it down a little bit it's gonna go slower you press it down harder it's gonna go faster but the the, um, the difference between going slow and fast it's very small with this machine so you need to be very very subtle because it's not hard to just kind of take off so I'm gonna go slow I'm slowly pressing down. <laughs> I'm, not used, I'm not used to it yet. Oh, I lost my uh, bobbin there. That's okay. But you guys get the idea. Uh, and you can see the, the workings of the walking foot. And um, I, I, I need to change my bobbin thread. Um, that definitely <clears throat> there's a troubleshoot for you if the back doesn't look good it's because your bobbin thread needs to be rewound so I've always wanted to always um, branch out from my domestic machine to something more industrial um, and make bags and things like that you know I've worked with leather and um, you know it works with my machine with you know really strong leather needles and things but of course you know um, it is more likely to break the machine if I were to keep doing that and then some things just start you know the stitches start to skip and so you just know it's not good for the machine to be sticking really really heavy fabrics through it so um, I'm not necessarily going to be switching over to industrial only so don't worry I'm gonna stick with my um, regular sewing machine for a lot of smaller projects and things but once in a while I would like to throw in um, an industrial video and um, and most of my tutorials if I do do it with the industrial you know can be worked to do with the domestic so it's just depends on your fabric choice so I'm going to show you the bag that I made with this machine but I know this machine definitely could be made with my domestic because I made it um, in a larger version with that machine so um, don't worry about that stuff. I will always keep my domestics and my industrial people in mind. Um, 
but I am also looking to do maybe some patterns from people who um, you know are releasing patterns so if you know anybody out there who would love to maybe be featured in a video I would love to you know help the community and help get the word out for new patterns and things like that so I'm definitely in the market for helping people out um, you know I definitely did all of this YouTube stuff on my own and I know it's very hard to do and you know it takes a long time to get to climb that ladder so if anybody out there would like um, a helping hand I am here for you guys um, so I'm just gonna show you quick this um, bag that I made here so here it is um, it has a box bottom it has a zipper in the front so I made this with cotton um, interfaced and then I have this waterproof canvas which I really really love inside the front pocket is um, waterproof canvas and then the cotton here on the back is a cotton panel and it has three separate slots here on the inside it has a zipper and then it's hard to see but a few slip pockets in there so um, this is just a little sneak peek for the tutorial but I really wanted a bag where I could be really organized and be able to, you know, open it up and be able to see my things. Um, so this is the tote, you know, handy tote version, um, but I did make this in a beach bag size and it's super amazing. I actually made the front panel, the lining, um, waterproof and I really found that you know if I went over to my mom's to go swimming with the kids and you know if they take their bathing suits off and they're wet I would just stick them in this pocket until we got home and then this was like the waterproof pocket that would you know prevent it from seeping in and getting anything else wet in, on the inside so if you had anything that was important then it would stay in this pouch since this is just my handy you know take anywhere bag I um I just use the cotton on the inside, but I also put some little D hooks there. So if I want to make it into a crossbody, but I'm really excited about how this turned out and I will show you how to make the beach bag version. And I also did a mesh elastic pocket on the inside. So hopefully that works out because I need to do it again, but I really love it. And I hope that you guys do. So I hope you like this video and um, you know if you have any questions or comments down below and yeah thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next tutorial. Bye guys!